Welcome back to another episode of Sip the Talent Presents 2019 NFL Prospects and NFL Draft Prospects. Uh, today we're going to talk about Jawan Taylor, a right tackle from the University of Florida. Uh, Florida Gators, he was the uh, right tackle for him. He's 6'5", 334 pounds. Had a great uh, combine, showed good feet, good hips, uh, decent strength, and uh, the, the knowledge and the wherewithal to, to be a good uh, right, a good tackle in the NFL. I'm, uh, I'm thinking he's one of the top 10 tackles in, in this draft, and uh, let's get into it and see what makes what I see to make me think he's one of the top 10 tackles in the group. All right, this guy right here. This guy is one of the reasons I think Juwan Taylor has excelled this year. Uh, in my eyes, this is one of the best O-line coaches in America. Uh, this is John Hevesy. I met him when he was uh, coaching O-line at Mississippi State. Had a ton of conversations with him. He coached uh, a good friend of mine that uh, ended up playing for him, and he got close to. So as they as they were around each other, I got a chance to sit in on some conversations and some meetings and some stories. And this is a, this is one of the best guys I know coaching football. Uh, very personable, very hard nosed, uh, very good coach, and I think he's the best thing to happen to the Florida Gators uh, O line uh, since Dan Mullen came and he decided to come with him. John Hevesy. But let's get into the on the field stuff. Right here, uh, Juwan's going to display great feet. Just play it first, then we can talk about it. The ability to sit and then step back in on Jerry Green. Let's bag it up. Initially, he's going to set right, then step back inside to protect the inside. So, off the ball, he, he kick slides. And so, he just sees the defensive end decide to want to cross his face, and he steps right back in that alley. Hands on the outside. We're going to reposition those hands. Got him turned. Now, he can work it. He can do whatever he want with him now. He can do whatever he want with him now. It's a good job moving his feet. Kick. Step back up. Slide, slide, slide. Keep working your feet. Keep working your feet. Keep sliding. Giving the quarterback time. Not bad, not bad, not bad. Good job moving your feet. All right, finishing blocks. We all love nastiness with our O-linemen. Uh, this guy does a good job of, of just simply being nasty and finishing blocks. It's on a down block. Just take them out. Look at that. All the way to the other side of the numbers. Let's go back. Let's go back. Bring it on back. They're going to start to the right of the middle of the field. And look where he ends up at on this down block. Got that blitzing linebacker trying to come down. Get to the other hash. Now they at the numbers. Below the numbers. Block that man all the way to the other side of the numbers. We love that. Love got to finish blocks and be nasty. Because that stuff will wear on those linebackers and, and deep defensive uh, linemen later on in the game. They'll remember that. All right, smart. Mississippi State, uh, initially, and I don't know if I got it, They these two guys slid out, and now this guy's kind of working in. And, you know, from the top of it, you think, you know, the 65's going to go out, 74's going to get that, and then this guy be free to do whatever. But watch him just sift through all this and, and pick it up and just know what to do. When he stepped down, when this guy stepped down, he already knew who to go block then. And it was simple. So I got lashed those big old arms on him and just turned him. That's simple. That's simple. Which I should have got more at the beginning of the play to see what that initially was. But they they did they weren't lined up right here initially. They shifted to this and they were able to adjust and, and pick up the right people, right pre, right personnel. And uh Taylor ended up blocking this linebacker here. Your tight end got this edge guy, and your guard picked up this guy while he's running like an outside zone. I think it's outside zone. He likes outside zone, yeah. All right, hip to hip on this down block. 
Watch him in 74 get hip to hip and work in motion to get this guy up out of here. Boom. Right there, hip to hip. Now let's run him out of here. Hold another four yards off the ball. Perfect double team. Perfect double team. Now here I got shoulder square. And what this is, is you keep your shoulder square because when, 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 when defenses try to run stunts on you, you can see the stunts and you can get back to the gap that you're vacating after the double team. So he got a double team there. And he never turned his shoulder to go chase it. And now look, when that guy disappeared, he's already looking for something to come back. Look at his eyes going this way already. Already looking for something to come back. It comes right back to him. His shoulders are square. He picks it right up. And he's not not a factor at all. Not a factor at all because he kept his shoulders square and his eyes up the field. Now here, I have two aggressive. And this is uh this is Montez Sweat. So this is one of the better D linemen uh in the draft this this uh this season. And so what I think happens here is he's worried about the speed, because everybody knows Montez can run, especially after the draft. But we didn't know he was that fast. So he's worried about the speed. So he's going to set real deep, real deep, real deep. And watch what Montez does to him. I got to get deep because he fast. Boom, boom, boom. And he just goes right up under because he sets so deep. Worry about the edge. Worry about protecting the edge. And he caught him right. He caught him. I'm not going to say he set bad, but he caught him right there with those two, with, those, with his feet too close together. And cut inside on him, and he couldn't recover. He cut him right, right mid kick, and, and got inside of him, and, and forced him to uh, force the quarterback to get rid of the ball. wasn't a bad sets. He just caught him at the perfect time. He made just look how his feet close together on his kick. He just caught him between kicks, went underneath him, and and got the uh, pressure on the QB. Now, very next play, Sweat's not there. Taylor's not worried about the speed. Can't take care of you all day. Just running wide. That simple. Wasn't worried about the speed of sweat. So it was comfortable in his kick slide. You just take care of this guy all day. Once he get his hands on you, you're pretty much done for. Pretty much done for. All right, blocking in space. Now, this is going to be a little swing pass or a screen or whatnot. And he's not going to actually contact anybody. But the simple fact that he's out in space running and to, to run over somebody and not stopping, that's what I like. Just run through the guy. And if they get out the way, so be it. This screen. Now, simply, you just run through this guy. If he gets behind you and you run through him, even if he ducks in or out, that clears the lane for the, um, the ball carrier. The only thing that makes this play not work is this guy missed his block. But if, if Taylor just runs through this guy, and even if he dives and misses, this guy has to get out of the way, and the ball carrier can run right off his butt, either inside or outside. Like I say, when he jumped inside, had this guy not had this guy not missed his block, the ball carrier been right up the sideline behind him because he jumped inside, avoiding that block. So it's a good job of him being in space. Even though he didn't contact somebody, he did his job. The other guy just didn't do his to make the play successful. All right, versus Swift. Montez Sweat, Taylor. Two first round picks, I think. Let's see what happens. That time he kicked wider. Didn't kick his four back. Yeah, he, he adapted. He, he kicked more toward the middle of this E than back toward the S. So he adapted to him. He cut that space down. He cut that space down on Sweat. And now he can get his hands on it. They just gonna run him on by. He adapted that. He adapted that kick slide. He adapted the kick slide and was able to uh, block sweat on that play. L made him a, a non-factor. I right, watch hand placement on this one. The initial hand placement is gonna be outside. Outside. Now watch him adjust and set it set down. Getting beat a little bit. Move the hands in. Nah, look where his hands are at. Inside. No go. No go. 
Stalemate. Able to, able to complete a pass for a big first down at this time in the game because of him protecting that, that edge. All right. And his last play against Sweat. See what happens with Sweat. Sweat tries to beat him with speed. He just beat him to the point. He cut him off. Let's see if he, he see how his kick slide was. If he used that angle again. He kicked wider, yes. Kicked wider instead of more straight back. Cut that angle off. Now Sweat Sweat I mean, yeah, Sweat still right here could potentially get under him if he uses this hand to knock that those arms off him, but he doesn't. He just tried to beat him with speed. And Taylor, once he gets those hands on you, it's hard to get him off if you don't do it initially. So now he just run past him. Yeah, that might be a hole, but so what? He protecting his quarterback. Again, this is Juwan Taylor from Florida, the right tackle. Had a, a great senior year. I think with the addition of uh, John Hevesy coming to Florida, that helped the O-line out tremendously, helped him out tremendously. And now I think he's going to be one of the first uh, O-linemen taken, definitely top five, top ten O-linemen taken in the draft, first-round pick, Juwan Taylor. Again, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. Uh, share with your all your group chats, your friends, your your Gator fans, your your whatever NFL team fans you're with. Uh, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, and uh, this is Coach Evans again, and we'll catch you next time. See you at the tally. We out.